Here are a few rappers who somehow turned into scammers. Number 9. Bandman Kevo Despite being arrested numerous times and even sent to prison, Chicago-based rapper Bandman Kevo still maintains a thriving rap career. His Instagram was built with Kevo's knack for marketing and his obsession with becoming famous. However, Kevo is famous for more than just his music these days. Kevo's most well-known crime occurred in 2014. What was the crime? In the financial crime world, it's called cracking cards. But if you want to be technical, Kevo was committing bank fraud. Essentially, Kevo and his associates charmed people into giving them their debit cards, PIN included. Then Kevo would take the information and use it to deposit fake checks into the accounts. From there, he'd withdraw the money from an ATM with the card information. The individuals who lent Kevo their debit cards were given a piece of the pie, while Kevo pocketed the rest. Investigators believe the rest amounted to $639,745. Once the news broke out, Van Man Kevo's name, next to the six-figure fraud, trended in 2014. Believe it or not, Kevo was thrilled. For his entire life, the aspiring rapper craved fame more than rhymes. When he was sentenced to 22 months in prison, Kevo vowed he would do everything to stay relevant. And by relevant, Kevo meant famous. At the time, he even announced plans to release a new song called Phone Call before he surrendered to law enforcement when it came time to serve his sentence. Number 8. TJX6 Some rappers put gun products in their name, but not TJ. His name is based on a seemingly mundane device anyone and their mom can buy off of Amazon, an MSR X6. This small piece of hardware is worth $200 and can clone credit cards, provide you have the necessary information like the card number and CVV. TJ raps about them all the time, amongst other scam topics. Though he's only 20, TJ is considered a pioneering artist in a subgenre he helped found, scam rap. Scam rap is a semi-popular movement where rappers openly rhyme about their financial crimes. For example, TJ raps about selling social security numbers, finding profiles with 700 credit scores, and other explorations of the notorious dark web. Though he raps about committing crimes, TJ has never been charged with anything. He claims he pulled off his first scam in first grade when he sold his friends bags of parsley, passing the common kitchen herb off as marijuana. But no one has ever corroborated any of these claims, making some wonder if TJ is telling the truth. After all, many rappers sing about murdering and stealing, but have they ever done anything so heinous? While TJ may be a meta scammer, these next scam rappers are a different story. Number 7. Chad Focus he was on billboards in Times Square, gracing top 40 dance charts and accumulated a few million views on YouTube. Chad Focus, on the surface at least, was going places. Until 2019 when Chad was charged with wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and identity theft. According to his music videos and Times Square billboard, Focus was the number one artist in the world and needed to be smothered by models and dollar bills falling from the sky. Except they weren't falling from the sky, and Chad Focus wasn't number one in any relevant category. The real Chad, Chad Arlington, was a search engine specialist from 2015 to 2018. During his three-year tenure, Chad and three other employees used a company credit card to buy recording equipment for themselves. They also used the company's credit line to pay for airline tickets, fancy restaurant bills, and artificial social media followers, likes, and views. Overall, Chad spent $4 million that wasn't his to spend. Now he faces a potential 20-year prison sentence, with a minimum of two years for aggravated identity theft. When Chad's sentencing day came around in May of 2021, Judge Bennett ordered him to serve 30 months in prison. Bennett also ordered Chad to pay back the $4 million he stole. However, following through on that order might prove harder than surviving in prison. Number 6. Gorilla Black Charles Tony Williamson, aka Gorilla Black, is very open about committing his many financial crimes. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Black told the YouTuber how he bought the credit card numbers, then purchased the magnetic strip, which is the horizontal black strip you use to scan your card, and other equipment necessary for stealing someone else's identity. According to the investigation conducted in 2012, Black purchased over 27,000 credit cards off the dark web. Several branches of law enforcement found that Black used the cards and the other card parts he bought to steal $150,000. In 2012, Black was indicted on 22 counts of fraud. However, while waiting for his trial to begin, Black continued buying credit cards until the Secret Service busted him and brought him back into custody. When his day in court rolled around, Black pleaded guilty to all counts. 
In total, he faced approximately 45 years of prison time and 1.5 million in fines. Though Black didn't rap about stealing the money in his songs, he did explain why he committed these crimes. He told DJ Vlad that he's always strived to make money wherever he could, and there's no easier way to make money than online credit card fraud. Credit card fraud's inherent convenience also allowed Black to take care of his number one priority, supporting his family. Black is out of prison and with his family once again, but currently serving a five-year supervised release. Number 5. Aaron Burns Burpo The best news stories start with Florida Man, and this next fraud story is no exception. Aaron Burns Burpo, who is, of course, from the Sunshine State, was involved in a bizarre scam that ended in a Georgia Fairfield Inn. Burpo was staying there as someone else. Instead of being Aaron, he was a member of the famous rap group, Wu-Tang Clan. Of course, there are two members in Wu-Tang, so Burpo had brought along an accomplice, Walker Washington. The duo made a career out of staying in fancy hotels, renting luxury limousines, and ordering expensive food from catering companies. For the most part, people believed them. Walker and Burpo ran their scheme for nearly three years until they stayed in the Fairfield Inn in Augusta, Georgia. The employees there became suspicious of these guys pretending to be famous hip-hop stars and eventually called the cops. When the authorities apprehended the duo and dug a little deeper into their background, they discovered how these rap imposters afforded a celebrity lifestyle. For the past two years, Burpo and Walker had been going on the dark web and stealing people's credit card info. In total, they stole around $300,000, spending most of it on expensive stuff from 19 different businesses, all of whom expect to get their money back once Burpo completes his 84-month prison sentence. Number 4. Pop-Up Boys the Gothamist accurately described this next fraud case as straight out of a Key and Peel sketch. But absurd satire is supposed to be just that. Absurd, which is defined by the dictionary as wildly illogical. The Pop-Up Boys, a Brooklyn-based group of 39 loosely affiliated rappers, are as absurd as you can get. During their heyday, the boys released a song with the lyrics, I'm cracking cards, cause I'm a scammer. And they weren't exaggerating. The boys stole around $414,000 from various accounts they harvested from the dark web. Most of the time, the individuals who owned the accounts had no idea 39 rappers were draining their credit lines in Brooklyn. And how did the group decide to spend their money? Fortunately, the pop-up boys provided us a clear answer in one of their rap songs, saying, watch the money do a backflip, early morning up at Saks Fifth. They're, of course, referring to Saks Fifth Avenue, the luxury clothing store where everything costs way too much money. The authorities also found many other expensive purchase records to corroborate the boys' song lyrics. Thanks to the payment records and the easy-to-understand lyrics, investigators obtained warrants and found card forgery equipment in the homes of various boys' members, leading to the arrest of all 39 of them in 2016. Number 3. Self-Made Cash in an Instagram post from August 8, 2019, rapper Self Made Cash announced a new album called The United States vs. Self Made Cash. He recorded and produced the album in light of the fraud charges brought against him by police who caught Cash committing credit card fraud and identity theft on the dark web. But in all honesty, you don't have to be an ace detective to figure out Cash was stealing money from people's credit cards because he rapped about doing it. Like Fontrell Baines, self-made Cash, whose legal name is Jonathan Woods, likes to rap about his criminal activities. A track titled Swipe God Freestyle features intimate lyrics like, Off these swipes I made a killing, and who could forget, I made ten, ain't have to split it. Strong words from the self-proclaimed Swipe God, who released another track dubbed in swipe I trust. In addition to words, Cash also used images of credit cards and credit card skimmers to boast about how much money he was making, providing investigators plenty of evidence to prosecute him with. Number 2. G Herbo G Herbo is not like the other rappers in this video. He is already signed to a major label and has a Billboard 200 album under his belt. In addition to those accolades, Herbo has collaborated with hip-hop icons such as Lil Durk and 21 Savage. Herbo is who the other scammers wish they were. So, it seems strange that in May of 2021, Herbo pleaded not guilty to several counts of fraud, including wire fraud and identity theft. However, G. Herbo, whose legal name is Herbert Randall Wright III, claims he is innocent. However, investigators say otherwise and have a mountain of evidence against Herbo. If he is found guilty, the young Chicago-based rapper could face 20 years in prison. To avoid a potentially lengthy sentence, Herbo must convince a judge the mountain is a molehill. 
The prosecutors going after Herbo are accusing him and co-conspirators of charging numerous expenses to compromise the counts. The costs include luxurious trips, designer puppies, we're not sure what that even means, private jets, and renting fancy Jamaican villas. Prosecutors have yet to prove whether these luxuries were funded by stolen money or music income. In other words, Herbo's trial is sure to be interesting. Number 1. Nuke Bizzle Fontrell Antonio Baines, who performs under the stage name Nuke Bizzle, kicks off his most famous music video called EDD with a mail truck delivering several envelopes full of cash. From there, Bizzle spends the rest of the video dancing with wads of money and working behind a laptop. We've actually covered this interesting rapper in depth. Click to learn much more in depth about his idiotic scam here. At first glance, the song seems to be your typical hustle game rap tune, but if you were to listen closely to the lyrics and Google what EDD means, then put the two together, you'd realize the song is essentially a confession. EDD is an acronym for the State of California's Employment Developmental Department. The EDD program helps down-on-their-luck Cali citizens get a debit card while unemployed or suffering from an on-the-job injury. To obtain an EDD card, a worker in California will need to go through an application process where you have to claim however much money you think you'll need. In the song EDD, Nuke Bizzle made it very clear how he applied for his EDDs. He used the identities of individuals who actually qualified for the debit cards, which in this case were small business owners and independent contractors. The money he curated from those cards rounded out to $1.2 million when added up. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section which rapper did the dumber crime in this video. Was it Nuke Bizzle or was it G Herbo?